Coach, in 2019, the Malta FA Assembly decided on strategic objectives which focus mainly on technical and development projects, pandemic apart. It has been three years of non-stop work and many reforms in the area. How satisfied are you with uh, being the man chosen to lead all of this? It's clear that for what we do, I'm satisfied. My opinion, there is still a lot to do. Uh, I'm satisfied. We, we just, uh, two weeks ago, I sent a, uh, an email to FIFA in which we explain all the projects that we implemented in the last uh, two years, two years and a half. And also I told them that we have also other, either other uh, idea to, to continue to grow. Now, me, uh, I'm only one, one part. I believe a lot in the teamwork. So we are working in the right way, in my opinion. Uh, I repeat, there is still a lot to, to do. It's clear that we need the, I cannot say the help, but the involvement of all the stakeholders involved in this, in this game. Stefan, outside of the comfort zone is never easy. However, the Malta FA clearly is not afraid of doing so, it's not afraid of things to do that need to be done to elevate football to the next level. How difficult is it, however, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis to persuade people, uh, above all, that uh, change is not easy, but change is important and will it ultimately lead you towards your objective? So it's clear that in all the, we can say in all the environment, to exit from the comfort zone is not always simple, no? But uh, I think that is necessary if we want to change something, and this is our target to ch change. Uh, we have to, to understand that there are challenges, that there are something to change. For sure, this is a long term project. And when, I, when we say long term, it's not two years, three years, four years, it will take more. You cannot change 120 years in three, four years. You need time, you need time to change, we, you need time to grow. Nothing happened like this, so this is normal. But I think that if if everybody feel involved and everybody think that they can give a very very good uh, help to this to this development, I think that we can achieve something. I'll change the subject momentarily. Obviously, subject still football. However. More focus on the on the clubs per se, because uh, the clubs that uh, participated in the UEFA competitions recently, a few months ago, uh, did very well, very positive results, um, especially one of the teams in, in particular. Do you think it's a sign of things to come, or was it a one-off? No, no. I hope I hope that is a, an important signal we can see for for all the the football family here. Uh, I hope that is also the result of a uh, work that we did also with the players involved in, in, in our setups, no? in our, in our uh, national team. But it's clear that we cannot think that the most important things are done, that the big job is done, and now we can. No, I think that is a step, but we have to push more. We have to push more. And I hope that also from the clubs, that it's clear is not something that I can control, but I hope that there is this kind of mentality to continue to, to grow. Yeah, speaking about mentality, a change in mentality happens, uh, happened in the uh, MFA Technical Centre that is pushing for uh, certain age groups, the younger age groups, instead of being connected age groups, uh, every age group is represented uh, by, by itself. Why do you believe that this strategy works better than Previous strategy. But listen, in, in, in listen. We are, we when we start, we say that we are focused on a player-centered approach. If we are focused on the growth of the player, means that we are focused on the growth of every single player, every single guy. Okay. Before it was like this. For example, I mentioned one example. Under 17, they finish their season. A group finish their season. After we forget them for one year and a half, and after we call them again when we start with the under-19. But if we are focused on a player-centered approach, means that we are focused on the growing on the, on the player. How the, a player, a person, a guy can grow 
if we work three years with them, maybe more now with the apps, and after we forget them for one year and a half, and after we pretend that we can restart, this is impossible. For, for this, we decide to, to work for every age group. Also, it also gives more space to, to, to more players. Because exactly. Groups, Exa exactly. And also, we have to consider one thing. There is, for a, a, every single player, there is a chronological age, but after there is also a biological age. Why I have to lose a player that maybe today is still not ready from a physical point of view, but maybe with the right work he can grow? Maybe one on 20. I don't know, maybe one. But why I have to lose this one? Here, I mentioned this to our staff one day in a meeting regarding the scouting. Uh, there are some countries, there are some nations that if they, if they mistake 20, 30 evaluations of on player, they have still 100 players maybe in that age group. In Malta, if we mistake one, if we mistake one, maybe we have one on three, one on five. We cannot mistake. The percentage is completely different. So we have to be really careful and we cannot lose a potential player. So I think that every player deserves to invest a, sometimes on them. We're speaking about youth players. Something else that's been going on is the strength and conditioning program that this summer a group of players um, were doing. Is this the type of added value you want for the Malta Football Association? Is one is one is one target. Is one is one thing. This come from a we had this idea before. After uh, we did um, an analysis through FIFA, we received a report from FIFA about the situation of football in Malta. And they mentioned that in their opinion, there were two most important things. That our youth teams play, they are on the bottom of the classment up regarding the uh, number of matches plays, played at international level. So this is something that we have for sure increase, to increase, and we are working on this. And also, we have to work on the performance area, to increase the work in the performance area, in the sport science area. Strength and conditioning is one area of this. It's not the only one, because these players are also, in, we follow them also from other point of view. For example, the nutritional area. For example, the mental performance area. So that, that is a, a part of a, big, a big project, focus, I repeat, on the players. We are focused on the development of the players. We are not focused on the, on the result of one game, but we are focused on this kind of development. When we speak about long term, that means that you have to work on the players and to give them the, the time and all the possibilities, all the chance to grow. Something new as well that's probably helping these youngsters to grow is the, uh, the hubs that uh, you've, you've created. Incidentally, Malt Under 15 was the, the, the first group to come out of the, the hubs. There, it was their first international tournament and they did really, really well. Uh, won against Scotland, Gibraltar, uh, UEFA Development Tournament topped the group. It's something that I don't think we've ever, we've ever seen at that level. However, they are coming from, from these hubs. How important, we've seen an example, however, how important for the long-term future are these hubs for youngsters? But this is, now, this result has to be another starting point for us. Uh, it's positive, me, I am more happy about the performance done than about the single result. It's clear as when you have a good result with, maybe with national teams that are in a different position, also in the ranking than you, you are, you have to be you have to be more than happy. Uh, so this thanks to the, the sure, sure the players, thanks to the coaching staff, and sure uh, and thanks to all the, 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 the people working in the technical center. But sure is the a first result also coming from the work done in these regional football hubs. The, the idea of this, the creation of these hubs was we have to start, it's not really the right work, the selection. We have to start to follow 
not to select, to follow the young players in an early age. So the idea was, instead to start with the national team under 15, we start from under 12 to follow them and to see their development, giving them all, I repeat, all the chance to grow. Step by step, they don't tend to think that they are national team, they are not national team, they are a first pool of players. Like always we say, the doors of the national team are, of all the national teams are always open. Maybe there is a player that's run for the abs and arrive, I don't know, I hope, in the senior national team. Maybe someone will develop a bit late and maybe will start to come in the national team. We have example eh, from this point of view. For example, now in under 17, we, we have now a player that last year in under 16, we called sometimes, he didn't have great performance. Now, in my opinion, this year under 17, after also maybe these six weeks, he grow a lot and now is one of the best players of the team, for example. This is something that can give us confidence that we are on the, on the right uh, way. I start talking now about the, the National A team, because uh, it's, it's the most followed, definitely, by, by the public. You're the head coach of that team, so we need to ask about that. Malta finished the last group of qualifications with five points. Um, it was a positive, I think, five points in my opinion, having seen everything. In October now, there's the, the draws for the Euro qualifiers that will happen in, in Germany 2024. What are your expectations ahead of the draw? But about about the, the, the group of the, that we played in the, in the World Cup qualifiers, I think that was a good result. Um, is, if we have to speak about number, it's a record of points. We equalized the record that was done, I don't know, some years ago. Uh, okay, we didn't finish in the best way that qualifiers, but there are a lot of reasons behind. Uh, we didn't arrive in, the, in our best condition to that games, and also we face clearly two, two important national teams. But this is done. I think also that was a, a moment uh, for us to, to grow, to see what we did, to see what we have to improve. Now about this, we'll see in October what, uh, what will happen in the draw. I hope to, to have uh, one of the best national team in, the, in our group, so to go maybe, I don't know, to play in a, in a great stadium. No? That can be, can be another step for us. And after we see, we know that, my opinion, in the last draw we were not so lucky, in the last draw for the World Cup qualifiers. Uh, now we'll see in this one that maybe can give us more chance to, to win also more points. Another thing that is being discussed a lot recently uh, about national teams is the, the Nations League. We are in a league, but uh, a lot of people think that Malta can make it to, 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 the, to the next league, to, to League C. Uh, how, do you, how do you look at these things, our chances of being promoted? And I don't want to be negative, however, if we are not promoted again, how do you look at that if we don't? First of all, to have around us an environment that think that we have the hope to be promoted, yeah, I, think, I think that is a big achievement. Because maybe some years ago was not like this, to, 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 to think that we can win, that we can achieve something. After what I can say, we did a, we did a meeting a few months ago with the, with the journalist to explain our philosophy and they <laughs> remember that they told me, oh coach, but with San Marino, six points. I think that was the normal that against a team that is under us in the ranking, six points. Really was not, no, it was difficult, it's not, it was not simple, it was difficult because you know that in, in June happened a lot of things, one very bad thing for, the, for, for us because we lost one very, very important part of, this, uh, of our group. And uh, to go in the pitch and to win is not important against who. It was difficult to, to go in the pitch in that moment. So I think that was a, a very good result to obtain this. After, with Estonia, if we have to look at the number, we are 168 in the ranking, Estonia is 110. So there is more than 50 position of difference. It's normal that they are the favorite of the group. We have the willingness to go there. 
and to obtain something good. I have to look at the number and I have to know that in our history happened only one time that Malta won with two goal differences because we have to win with two or more goal of difference to, to be promoted. Happened only one time and happened in June, last June in, in San Marino. So it's clear that we have to go there with the willingness to know that would be a big achievement if we will obtain this result. This has to be the, the mentality. Sure, the willingness to go there and to do and to put in the pitch our, our best. This is after if the result will be the one that we, 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 we would like or not, we have to continue to work, we have to continue to grow, we have to think that there, is, there are still big room of improvement for us. So this has to be the mentality. We cannot think, okay, we won, everything is perfect, or we don't win and everything is bad. It not, cannot be the mentality if you are focused of a long-term project. If there is a long-term project, project, you have to think that you have to continue to push and to work and not be, mm, we can say, uh, conditioned or, 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 or uh, uh, influenced, influenced by one very positive or one negative result. Associations, the association actually, and the, the clubs work closely together. It's a small country. We have to do that. The players have to come from the clubs ultimately to the national team. However, there's always this controversy about the domestic league stopping earlier or stopping for the national team players to, to be together, to work together in preparation for, uh, for the upcoming matches. How do you look at this? How important is it for the players to, to be together at an earlier stage? to train together and prepare a bit before everyone else. But this is, in my opinion, is very simple. So, we want to improve. We want to reduce the gap and the difference that we have with other associations. If we want to reduce the gap, we cannot do the same. We have to do something different. Like, uh, because we spoke about sometimes that eh, we increase the expenses at the technical center for, for the, to increase the number of matches for the youth national teams, to change this. But if you want to reduce, you cannot invest like the other. If, you are, if somebody is here and you are here and you invest the same, you will not reduce the gap, will maintain the same gap. And the same is from this point of view. If we want to reduce the gap, we have to work more than the other. This is obligatory. After, it's clear that one day I will have, if I will have 10, 12, hoping more players playing abroad, I will be the first to tell, because that means that we grow, that somebody uh, uh, achieve the possibility or uh, gain the chance to go to play to play abroad if i have 10 12 or more players playing abroad me i will be the first to come and to tell listen i don't need anymore the extra week i don't need anymore because we we in the fact we show that we are growing and now i can work like the other so this is, is very simple it's only a a technical uh, request we're speaking about the, the gap between Malta and, and other countries. You have coached at club level, at international level, different countries. So you've seen different setups, met different people, a lot of experience. When you look at everything, all the experience you have and, and all the countries, different teams, what are the challenges that, that Malta faces? And what are positives you may see that, that we have as, as a country in, in terms of football? But positive are, are the fact that, for example, in this situation, me, I am not only the coach of the senior national team, but I am also the technical director, so I can follow all the, uh, uh, all the people, all the development, all the projects. And this is the, the good thing uh, that not, don't happen for all, all the head coach of the national teams. This, this is clear. About the challenges, it, it, there is one big, that if we want, we want to change, 
if we want to change, we need everybody on board. We need to work together to try to, to achieve something and to reduce the difference that maybe there is, still there is between us and other, other associations. So this is the big challenge and to have everybody on board. And the big challenge is to convince everybody that not in football, in my opinion, in all the, uh, the different area or uh, in the life, if you want to build something, you have to believe in the young people. You have to believe in the young. We have to convince that is the moment to give a chance to the young player to show if they are or they are not. Because if we don't give them the chance, we will never know if they are, they are or not. And this is something that we have to give. We cannot say, eh, this I don't think that is good. No, no. We have to give them the opportunity. Give the opportunity and after we see what happens. Because the main concern from my point of view is the average age of the Maltese player, for example, play regularly in the Premier League. The average age of some player in some specific position in the national teams. So these are something that we have to understand, are, are practical things, practical. So we have, we have to sit down around the table, everybody, all the stakeholders, and to see, listen, this is the situation. It's not enough to say that this is the situation, it's not enough to say that we have a problem. We have to find a solution. So me, I am very open, me, I have my idea, for sure, but I am very open to hear from everybody, and after, if we decide that this is the line, this is the solution, we have to work in that direction for that solution. And finally, to, to end this here, we've spoken a lot uh, about a lot of things, the, the different age groups, the, the national team, the clubs, different competitions. For you, however, when you look at all of this, what's the main objective? For me, it is, the, the main objective is, in my opinion, we, we already did something. I prefer that not me, I say that we did something good or I prefer that some, someone outside that look the situation from outside can say that we are doing well or not. Uh, but the main objective for us when we arrive here was we have to change the situation. Uh, there is a situation that is, we can say, a lot of here that is in this, in this uh, that is like this. We have to work and to change things. I think that we are in the, on the right way, but it's the moment to understand that to enter in a next level, we have to do something more. So this has to be the mentality. We did, but it's not enough. We have to do another step.